There's this sort of meme going around that you should make your bed. Number one thing, make your bed. It's a, you basically start the day with a win. But isn't making your bed kind of a waste? I inherently do not understand the making of beds. And isn't making your bed especially wasteful if you're busy? Because we're entrepreneurs and, and creatives. We, do, we have shit to do. This is Love Your Work, and I'm David Cadavy. I've spent the past year interviewing some of the most successful entrepreneurs and creators, people like James Altucher, Jason Fried, Ryan Holiday, Laura Roeder, billionaire Steve Case, and many more. I wanted to get to the bottom of this meme. Today, on a very special episode of Love Your Work, we ask, do you really need to make your bed to be successful? Okay, it may seem like a strange quest to spend an entire year asking successful people whether they've made their beds. Why am I so obsessed with bed making? Well, I've never liked making my bed. Hello? Hey there. Hi. That's my mother. You made me make my bed, right? I do not remember making, having you have to make your bed. I swear I recall being forced to make my bed, but no. I don't think I was that strict of a parent, <laughs> particularly. <laughs> you know, I remember having you, making you, wanting to clean your room every once in a while, and in fact, our next time we can, yeah, remembers hearing this horrible screaming come from our house, and she thought, well, they can't be beating this kid, they don't, they don't beat their children, but I had asked you to clean your room, and you just, went ballistic because you didn't want your room clean. All right, so it turns out that according to my mother, I've never been forced to make my bed, which is strange because I feel like I've had a lifelong hate for bed making. I certainly never liked pointless straightening up as a kid. Why make your bed if you're just going to sleep in it? Why put away your toys if you're just going to play with them again? Jim Gaffigan, the comedian, said it best, I think. He said, I don't make my bed after I get up for the same reason I don't tie my shoes after I take them off. Making your bed isn't like brushing your teeth or bathing. If you never made your bed, it wouldn't make your bed frame age any faster, and it wouldn't make your mattress smell bad or anything like that. Fortunately, now I am an adult. Regardless of whether my mom made me make my bed, I am now free from bed-making responsibilities. I am free to choose to not make my bed. Or at least I was until this happened. If you make your bed every morning, you will have accomplished the first task of the day. That's Admiral William McRaven speaking to the University of Texas at Austin class of 2014. It will give you a small sense of pride, and it will encourage you to do another task, and another, and another. And by the end of the day, that one task completed will have turned into many tasks completed. So if you want to change the world, start off by making your bed. I hardly even have to play this clip for you. I bet you were already thinking about it, weren't you? When I told friends I was working on this episode for my show, every single one mentioned this speech. The video has been viewed over 5 million times. Self-help gurus have been echoing the Admiral's claims, saying something as simple as making your bed can lead to big things like success, happiness, and even... So if you want to change the world, start off by making your bed. The ability to change the world? Pardon me, but this is kind of an obnoxious claim. If you want to make your bed, go right ahead, but don't pass it off as some kind of miracle act. All right, I'll cut the Admiral a break on the whole change the world thing. He was giving a commencement speech after all. But I still have one big problem with the making of beds. I think that's such a waste of time. Who cares? Oh my gosh. No, absolutely not. He did not that's make my funny. bed. To 
anybody with any sense, it's quite obvious that making your bed is a huge waste of time. So, don't make your bed, David, you might say, but you know, it's not... It's not that simple. This is an issue of huge personal importance to me. I suffered a childhood full of bed making, and I won't watch it touted as a recipe for success with no proof whatsoever. So, over the past year on this show here, Love Your Work, I've been interviewing some of the most successful entrepreneurs and authors. I've even interviewed a billionaire. Now, today, I will report my findings. Will making your bed really make you successful? Let's start with the reasons that you would want to make your bed. We'll get that out of the way first. As the Admiral said, and as a few of my guests have said, if you make your bed, you can jumpstart a virtuous cycle of accomplishment. Every day. That's entrepreneur Noah Kagan. He started Sumo Me and AppSumo, and he was even employee number 30 at Facebook. I even make beds when I'm traveling. I make it in hotel rooms. Has that always been a thing for you? I think a friend of mine named Ron Goodman, he told me about it like 10 years ago. I don't think, do you know Ron? I don't think I do. All right, healthtap.com. So Ron, started, like, he's like, hey, for, he was in, I think he was in the Israeli army. He's like, number one thing, make your bed. It's a, you basically start the day with a win. I do, but not right away. That's Jody Edinburgh, a former lawyer to food and travel writer at legalnomads.com. I always get out of bed and then I like crawl toward coffee. And then after my coffee, I go back and make the bed. What does the value proposition offer, right? Making your bed takes two seconds, but it, it makes you feel so much more tidy that it's like, why not make your bed? Thank you for asking. I make my bed every day. That's Nick Gray. He runs a company called Museum Hack that gives high-energy museum tours. It's so fast. It's so easy. My friend Josh Abramson told me that he makes his bed every day because he immediately knows that he did something. Like, he did something. He can look at his bed within a minute of waking up and be like, I did that. I woke up and I made my bed. Look, it's a really attractive proposition, this idea that making your bed can start off a chain reaction of achievement. But could making your bed actually have the opposite effect? You see, there's a lot of research supporting the idea that willpower is a bit like a battery Once you've used up some willpower, say, getting yourself to exercise, you might not have any willpower left over later that day when someone offers you a giant slice of chocolate cake. In fact, there's one study that showed this willpower draining quite literally. As a reward for participating in the study, participants were offered a choice between fresh fruit or a giant slice of chocolate cake. Participants who had been given the more mentally draining task were more likely to choose the chocolate cake over the fruit. And in fact, they chose the chocolate cake at nearly double the rate. They had drained their willpower, and they couldn't resist. So, if you force yourself to make your bed, could you actually be draining your precious reserves of willpower, thus leaving yourself with less willpower throughout the day? I asked behavioral scientist Dan Ariely. He's also New York Times bestselling author of books such as Predictably Irrational. So, can making your bed actually reduce your willpower for later in the day, making you worse off? So, I think the question is, are you going to make making your bed a habit, a ritual, a rule? In which case, once it becomes a rule or a ritual, it will not take willpower. Mm-hmm. Right. Will, willpower takes only things that you question whether you should do them or not. If you're making the decision in the morning, contemplating whether I should make my bed or not, do I have time, etc., versus this is just something this is that just, I do. That's right. So according to Dan Ariely, if you're going to make your bed, you'd better be doing it every day. You can't be getting up in the morning and deciding whether or not to make your bed. It needs to be a habit. This ties in the concept of decision fatigue. If you have to decide in the morning whether or not you're going to make your bed, you're going to have less mental energy later on for bigger decisions. There's a number of influential figures who have taken measures to fight their own decision fatigue. Barack Obama usually wore the same outfit during his presidency. He didn't want to decide what to eat or what to wear, so he'd have more mental energy left over for making other bigger decisions. Same thing goes for Facebook CEO Mark Zuckerberg, and Steve Jobs popularized this practice by wearing the same black turtleneck every day. So whether you're going to make your bed or you're not going to make your bed, ultimately, you need to make a decision and stick with it. Either it's a habit or it's not. (music) 
Now you might be thinking, well, David, if you didn't make your bed, then you would have a messy bed. And I have to admit, if you're somebody like me who works from home, then you have to look at it all day. And that might have an effect on your productivity, a negative effect. Or according to neuroscientist John Cunos, you'd be on to something. There's, there's certainly a difference between being orderly naturally and the effects that orderliness has on you. So, for example, I think I would be more effective if my bed were made, if someone else made it. I mean, my wife gets up early, too, so she doesn't uh, have the time to do that usually. Um, so if someone came and cleaned my office and made it very orderly, that would have a positive effect on me. All right. If you disregard the effort of making your bed, according to a neuroscientist who studies creativity, it's probably better to have an orderly looking bed. And James Altucher, author of Choose Yourself, also feels that a more organized environment is better for working. I'm not necessarily an organized or clean person, but I, but I don't like to work unless it's a very clean environment. And so sometimes I have to do it for myself and sometimes you're married and someone else does it <laughs> or sometimes you do it for them and, you know, it just depends. It certainly wouldn't hurt to have your bed made for you. I have to admit that would be kind of nice if someone made my bed. But for most people, it's just not practical. Even if you can afford, say, to have help to come to your house, it's probably not economical nor practical to have them come to your house every day. And as far as I know, Uber has yet to launch a bed-making service. It would be nice to have a made bed without all that work, but that's just unrealistic. I'd also like to have ripped abs without exercising. And here's the big paradox about bed making. If you want to be a successful entrepreneur or a successful creator, yes, you need some degree of discipline. But you also need to be efficient with your time and energy. Keep in mind, this bed making advice came from someone in the military, Admiral McRaven. Being successful in the military, following protocols and working your way up to Admiral, takes a whole different set of qualities than being successful as an entrepreneur. Just ask Tucker Max, three-time New York Times bestselling author. Do you make your bed? Don't, of course not. Don't talk crazy. <laughs> what I do that? That's nonsense. I'm not in the right. military. I have to say... I felt quite vindicated when, after interviewing 20 different successful people on Love Your Work, I discovered that only seven of them were bed makers. Seven! Now, I suppose it's still possible that making your bed could increase your odds of being successful. Maybe there are some people with a mutant success gene that blesses them with the talent to build businesses and write books and do amazing things without even making their beds. Maybe. We can't really know for sure the effect that bed making has because really who would fund that longitudinal study? But if making your bed really increases your odds of success, wouldn't you expect more than seven out of 20 to be bed makers? And even if you take the three who have a spouse or a partner that makes the bed, that would still only be 10 out of 20 who are in bed making households. Half. At the very least you can confidently know that it's totally possible to not care one bit about making your bed and still be successful. If you don't make your bed, it doesn't guarantee that you're going to die penniless face down in a gutter next to a train station. The answers from my guests range from totally against making one's bed. No, don't, don't be ridiculous. <laughs> That's Laura Roeder from Meet Edgar, who has spoken at the White House. I don't understand. I don't. I inherently do not understand the making of beds. Too indifferent to making one's bed. Do I make my bed? That's Steve Case, former CEO of AOL and billionaire. Well, right now I'm in a hotel room and it's unmade. So I, I guess I guess the answer is sometimes I do and sometimes I don't. Okay, it's not a ritual for you. Not some no. sort of a habit that you have. No. To downright enthusiastic. Thank you for asking. I make my bed every day. I think all of this make your bed change the world nonsense is a product of an age old problem. We want instant gratification. 
We want to believe that we can do one simple thing, one simple thing besides getting up every day and doing the uncomfortable and sometimes painful work necessary to be good at our craft. If we're a writer, we want to know what kind of pen to use. If we're an athlete, we want to know what shoes to wear. No matter what it is that we aspire to, the promise that making your bed can make you successful is enticing and seductive. We can share a snippet about it on Facebook. We can declare our determination to make our beds, to be better, to reach for greater heights. And then we can congratulate ourselves when we do finally make our beds. And maybe we'll even reward ourselves with a piece of chocolate cake. It's actually a nice idea, feeling like you've accomplished something. I mean, who wouldn't like to start their day off feeling good? And this idea is what made me dig a little further. As I was reviewing all of my interviews, I found something. I found something in the details that changed the way that I looked at making my bed. I sometimes, like, throw my bed. That's Jason Freed. He's CEO of Basecamp. Like, I kind of just, like, flop the sheets so it sort of looks made up, but no, never been into that. Uh, no. That's Ryan Holiday. He's author of Ego is the Enemy and The Obstacle is the Way. I've heard great things about making it a ritual, but I usually just wake up and leave. Jason Freed may not consider himself to be a bed maker, but there's a big difference between just getting up and leaving and, quote unquote, throwing your bed. I like it to be sort of semi-presentable at a certain level. And by the way, it makes sense that Jason Fried would be getting me to rethink bed making. He did write a New York Times bestselling book called Rework. And in Rework, he discourages standard business practices like meetings and planning and even having an office. Thank you for asking. I make my bed every day. That's Nick Gray again. Remember, he is really enthusiastic about making his bed. But is Nick really that different from Jason Fried? When I'm laying down in my bed, right, I'm, I'm still like just waking up. I kind of start very quickly to straighten out the covers. And so I kind of like flare the sheets to kind of straighten it out. And then I more or less like jump up. I stand up inside my bed and I flare the sheets again and just line it all up and just like pull the sheets down to my feet and then just hop off the bed. And I really could probably make my bed in eight seconds. I don't think Nick's bed making would pass in the military. You have to have the sheets neatly folded and tucked under the mattress. But Nick's eight-second method actually gets most of the benefit of making your bed without all that extra effort. Your bed looks nice enough. and You do get to start your day off with a win. And it only takes you eight seconds. It's sort of the uh, 80-20 of bed making. It takes you 20% of the effort and you get 80% of the benefits. Actually at least 80% of the benefits, because this approach eliminates one of my biggest pet peeves about bed making. The reason why I don't do it is because I don't like made beds. That's Jason Freed again. Like, I, I don't like, like when I go to a hotel, the first thing I do is I tear oh. the bed up. Yeah, I, I, I don't kick like the sheets yeah. out from under. I hate having my feet trapped. Me too. I don't like things tucked in and tight that way. Actually, that might explain something. And I swear, I just thought of this as I was cutting this together. Listen to this part of my conversation with my mother. And I probably made your bed for you, um, you know, pulled up the comforter and that type of thing. Uh, Maybe I didn't, uh, maybe I just didn't like that you made it, that was it. I think you weren't tall enough to pull those sheets out at the bottom when you were a youngster growing up. Now I remember, time and time again, night after night when I was a kid, I'd try to kick the sheets out from under the mattress of my bed. And the whole time, I'd be saying to myself, like, Why? Why does mom always have to make my bed? Why does anyone make their beds? When I grow up, I'm going to go on a quest to eliminate bed making. Then I'd have to get out of my bed just to undo the work that my mother had done. And I think that that's it. That's that's why I've hated bed making for so long. I'm one of those people who wants to have their feet free to breathe. I don't want them trapped between the mattress and the covers. And now I can finally see clearly the advantage to having this preference. If you go through all the trouble of tucking in your sheets to make the bed, not only does it take you much longer to make the bed, if you're a free-footed sleeper like I am, you end up needing to pull the sheets out from under the mattress. I don't know about you, but that equals wasted energy to me. 
and I do not like wasted energy. Because we're entrepreneurs and, and creatives. We, do, we have sh- to do. If I can make my bed in a mere eight seconds, if I can start a virtuous cycle of accomplishment and have a neat enough living space to do my best work, then that's an investment worth making. So now, thanks to the wonderful guests that I've had on Love Your Work and to my mother for helping me unlock the mystery, I have started making my bed. Or at least I throw my bed every day. It's a habit. Hey there, this is David. I hope you enjoyed this special episode of Love Your Work. If this is your first time listening to the show, be sure to check out our other episodes. I dissect the success of my guests and pull out the lessons you can use to find your calling. If you want to hear more of the people that you heard on this episode, Noah Kagan is on episode 41, Laura Roder is on episode 9, Tucker Max is on episode 29, Saya Hillman is on episode 4, Jody Edinburgh episode 23, Nick Gray 11, Dan Ariely 51, John Cunos, episode 8, James Altucher, 53, Steve Case, 25, Jason Fried is on the very first episode, and Ryan Holiday is on episode 31. And there's also many, many, many more. Check out the whole Love Your Work catalog at cadavy.net slash podcast. And don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss future episodes. For iTunes, just go to cadavy.net slash iTunes. This episode was created, written, produced, and edited by me, David Cadavy. Much of the music from this here episode is from Kevin McLeod from Incompetech.com. The theme music for Love Your Work is More Streets by Spider Flower. Love Your Work is a production of Cadavy Inc. <laughs>